Okay, the um, third member of the commission is going to be a little late arriving, so I'm going to start, uh, I'm going to juggle around the, uh, the order of the items with uh, my fellow commissioners' permission here, but I will open the um, uh, July 2nd, 2014 uh, Northampton License Commission. Um, the uh, meeting is being uh, audio and video recorded um, at this time, as is a custom. And I'll mark them to meetings if there's anyone who wants to make a public comment on anything at this point. Um, and seeing none, I'll move on. Uh, I'll take item number five, application for short-term line and vault license, trustees of Forbes Library. Hi. Hello. How are you? Good, how are you? Good. So tell us what your event is about. Um, we have a reception for the exhibit that's just gone up in the Hosmer Gallery. Galleries, free artists. Um, we have wine from Global Wines in the fridge that's been there since the last reception that wasn't all used up, so we're, we're ready to go. Okay. And I see you have all the other information which you usually have here, and uh, you're in order. Uh, do you have any? Uh, no, questions? I just, I just. Uh, Make a motion that we waive the fee after customer. Okay, do you want to make a motion that we also grant the license? Yes. Okay. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. So your motion, your license is there with a fee waiver. Thanks. Um, I'm going to skip item six just for a second. Um, and um, uh, Mr. So we're gonna we're gonna skip ahead of your item just for a bit. Sure. Yep. Okay. Um, item number seven, application for um, Elks uh, Lodge to change officers and director. Hi. Hi. Just identify yourself for the record, please. Excuse me. Just identify yourself for the record. My name is Barbara Franklin. I'm the proposed uh, manager change, which was approved by you at May meeting, and then. Get kicked back by the ABCC for a uh, change of the directors. Uh, I see. So, so what so happened? It's because the directors had changed a while ago and that never had gotten caught up with. Okay, so we never approved the change of directors. So that's what the ABCC is saying. Yeah. Okay. So the, um, uh, the directors, I see from the checklist that uh, all the uh, items are here. The, Certificates, personal information, and so on and so forth, and the information from the Secretary of State for your new directors. Yes. And um, Corey checks and personal information on all of them. Okay. Really. Copies of driver's licenses. Copies of driver's licenses. You check. She so has the D checks. I see the check. <laughs> okay. Um, I just want to see the names. Um, and the change of manager checklist I'm looking at here, and we had already approved this, so um, I just going to ask you those questions at the time, Mark. Do we have to reaffirm the change of manager? I would guess so. Do you have any questions for this round? I wasn't here in May. I'm happy to reconfirm. Okay, then I'll make a motion that we approve the uh, change of directors and the change of manager for the Elks Lodge to Barb Franklin. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank you. Um, next item uh, application for alteration of premise. Ibiza Tapas. License uh, 27 on Strong Avenue. How are you again? Hello. Okay. Uh, so tell us what you want to do. Do you want to put chairs and tables outside? Is that it? Well, I already got the tables and the chairs outside. Okay. To serve food. All I want to do is just be able to serve uh, wine. Okay. We're so still waiting for the certificate of stand. Okay. Okay. Well, we can approve it. Is 
see it online so that you know it's I have it, but we can, uh, we, we can know that I'm going to follow up on it and not get uh, make it come Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, and the DPW, as far as tables and chairs, all of that's kosher. Yeah, he, yes. he wouldn't be here unless you right, right. talk to people, right? He's already doing it, and I spoke with Ned, and the okay. map is already in there. So he's already doing it for food. It was yep. just to add alcohol. Yeah, that's what, that's what it sounds so like. They got out there with their tape measures and measured how far you were from how much yeah. sidewalk you were leaving yeah. for folks. Okay. Um, okay. How many tables and chairs will you have outside? Three tables and six chairs.
control or not 100% control over some of what's transpiring with this project. This is not a normal project, and we're working as diligently as we can work, but it's just, it's not a run of the mill project. So rather than me have to come in front of you and jeopardize um, the license and, and have to have you rule on something that's been in discussion for quite some time, I just think the uh, easiest and smartest thing is for me to put that in front of you. So I've actually completed the majority of the paperwork on the transfer, and we'll have that in uh, shortly after the holidays. So that we'll be right the there. So, um, what he has said just now, just before you came in, is that um, he, um, you'll recall at the last meeting we gave him choices to um, uh, the license and operation of the church, sell it, um, transfer it, or let us take it back, cancel it. So he is uh, explaining, he's in the middle of explaining that he wants to transfer this to another yeah. another venue that you own? Yes. Uh, the concern that I have is that if October comes based on the discussion from the last meeting where there was a discussion that, that there might be an October date that people would be comfortable with and after extensive discussions with contractors, it's just, it's three months away and it's just based on the amount of work that's left to be done there, it's just not going to be, we see, possible no matter how hard we try to get it done by then. I mean, there's a ton of work that's going on. The inspections have happened, the city being great about coming over and inspecting regularly, but um, I just, knowing what we have left and knowing where we're already behind on certain contractors, I just don't feel comfortable coming back in front of the commission where a license can be taken. So based on the last meeting in terms of the transfer, I think the best thing that I can do is to transfer it out to another establishment. The paperwork is almost completed. Get that in front of the license commission and, and move on until such time as we have an absolute knowing date that we're going to open and then I come back in front of you with the specifics for that, where we have a real hard date with entertainment book, where we know for certain that we're going to open the doors on a specific date, as opposed to me standing up in front of you without even being able to present a, a viable um, list of when all of the items are going to be done. It's just it's just not possible based on, on you know the three months that, that the commission felt comfortable potentially in going to October. I just don't see that possible. You know, though, that we, um, that we have the discretion to a, approve or disapprove the license transfer, and then later on, should you want to come back and transfer it back to the church, where you have the right to, to, right. to, the to only deny other that option, The only other option is, is if, you know, rather than have to go through all, because it is extensive amount of effort, um, is if there was a way with this commission, and, and possibly with the blessing of the ABCC, to just understand that, you know, it's several more months. I mean, it, it's just, that's, you know, but that's based on the last meeting. I just didn't feel comfortable in coming in front of you and asking for that. So that, I mean, I'm at, I'm at the commission's mercy in terms of the transfer. It's fully understood. Uh, and that, uh, you know, that's, you know, I think in terms of alternatives, that, that, that's rather than have to come in front of you monthly and, and tell you, you know, give you the same updates. I mean, clearly there's a ton of work being done there. And things are moving very nicely, but it's just not, you know, date specific is not something that I can do. Right. Well, we originally approved the um, your plans and gave you the, the transfer of the license yes. to the church all those years ago because it sounded like a, a, a good project, right. good economically for the city. Your premises have been, uh, right. we never had any problems, and uh, or very few, and we were um, looking forward to it. But then as the issue, uh, you know, the delay came, you know, became more and more clear, we, right. we determined really that this was a pocket license. The, um, the same thing, you know, if this, if this project should be resurrected mm -hmm. and approved it against the objections of the neighbors at the time, um, you know, we would have to take a look then sure. at the, you know, what the benefits against, you know, whatever, whatever um, uh, disadvantages it poses to the city at that time. Right. We approved it in 2008, despite neighbors' objections, because it would seem good at the time, may not seem good at the time, future dates. Right. right. The neighbors' we're objections. All, we're all out. Yeah. Uh, the neighbors. We. I mean, uh, there was a neighbor behind us where he, um, at the end, was was understanding and was willing to go along with that. We had no issues, uh, and we get along with all the neighbors there. I think the type of project is not going to be detrimental at all. Okay. Well, we'll cross that bridge. We come to it. Right. Matter of fact, I, I'm getting ahead of myself. Where do you want to transfer the um, all alcohol? We're ready to open, as we had previously discussed, at 2628 Center Street. Uh, 
So uh, I've got to pick up the abutters list to get notifications out, and complete the application, and the that space is ready to turn the key and go and has been. So you'd be operating that license when? If you if you pre-approve the transfer to that board. It depends how long the transfer takes, but as soon as we get the license back from the ABC on the approval from the ABC, really? the space has been ready. The space is ready to go if we may need it. Mm -hmm. So and how many days a week will you be in operation? I mean, that was going to be, you know, I think a five day away. I don't recall, but I believe it was five days that we were operating there as a bar. How many days a week on average are you dark at the iron horse? It's, it's Many months we go seven days a week. Really? And then June and July we could go, you know, we have uh, we're down this week for maintenance. Um, it, it, it varies at all the establishments because we're based on live music. So, so you, you expect you expect five days a week. It's not a live music thing. No, I know. Yeah. No, no, no. But the, but the, at the place yes. next door you expect yeah. to be in, to be in serve, in service of alcohol yeah. five days a week. I hope so. Yes. Uh, at this time, let me turn it over to who wants to go first and ask questions of Mr. Seward. I, I, I don't know that I have a lot of questions of Mr. Seward. I, I have a lot of questions about a pocket license and us sitting here time and time again hearing kind of the same thing. Um, again, I wasn't on the commission. I have gone back and read. Um, all the minutes for the last couple of years um, to try to educate sure. myself. I, I don't want to come on here and speak to things that the chair um, lived through um, and, and has more personal knowledge. But um, assurances are being made, but assurances have been made time and time again. And I really think the effectiveness of this enforcement body has been called into question. The, the, just the fact that it's 26, 28, that uh, it seems as though um, some fairly drastic action had to happen uh, for this to suddenly be ready. I'm, I'm not sure. I'm just. I'm. I'm I guess I'm looking for some assurance, Mr. Sewer, that I'm not sure you can give me because there have been so many assurances and. And I think that if I sit here as a, you're trying to represent the interests of the overall community, the community, um, which I remember you saying at one point, um, you know, you've done well by the community. Well, the community's done well by you also. I think it's a synergy. I think there's, you know, there's you got to work together. And um, there certainly has been some publicity that I'm very concerned about this week. That, uh, that there's been taxpayer money spent, I think unnecessarily, on uh, trying to, to enforce the recoupment of a license that was, that was withdrawn. Um, so um, what makes this different? I guess you'd have to help me here, because I just don't see the only why thing I, I should tell you is that we're, you know, uh, I understand what you're saying, that yeah. we're ready to open. My, my, uh, Interest here is is coming in front of you based on what was discussed at the last meeting to try to figure out a solution, which was laid out to me as to how best to handle um, this license so that we don't lose the license and have the license available so that when we are ready to open, um, we hopefully can make this happen because it's an immense project. And so um, that's what was laid out. And so the solution, as I see it, is how I'm presenting it, and that that other space is ready to go ready to open in terms of what else has transferred. So the best way for me to answer is to just to prove to you that we're, we're ready to go and happy to show you the space. I'm happy to bring you through both spaces, as I have previously mentioned, so that you see what's happening. Um, the certificate of occupancy has been presented to us for that space. Um, and you're willing to give this commission a date certain that if, in fact, that date certain is not well, met? Yes, as I explained to Commissioner Rose and we're trying to explain to you that it, as soon as we have the transfer date from the ABCC would be when we would open. In other words, I'm assuming that we come in front of you in the August meeting. Um, it could take anywhere, if the space had been pre-approved, I think they just do a quick visit. It could take anywhere from two to four weeks typically um, from, the, uh, from the approval of the city. 
And so, uh, I mean, everything's in and installed and ready to go. Uh, you know, with the exception of an outdoor sign. And uh, with regard to 298 Main Street, um, you know, I don't know if the city is updating you. Um, we've been told that they have been giving the commission updates. If that's not happening, then I'm happy to update you as necessary in terms of the work that has commenced there. So, um, you know, the only assurances I can give you, Commissioner, is what I you know, can show you in terms of what's been done. Um, I can't look back at previous delays. I can show you what has transpired since, um, you know, since I've been in front of you for these meetings. And, and that's all visible and, and available in terms of taking a walk through it and, and visiting and seeing the work. Question comes to mind. Do you have the Board of Health certificate? And sir, no, we will have to walk. Yes, walk. yes, they have to walk through. And, and, um, and so, by uh, I'm waiting for a few days, but by mid part of the week, I'll have a schedule where we can get them to come in and give us the approval. Everything's been done to code, so we just need to have the Board of Health approval. Could you ask the Board of Health to uh, let Cindy know? Yes when that's going to happen yes. and when it has happened. Yes. And then if they decide to issue you uh, a board of health permit, yes. we'd like to know that. So you don't have an application filled yes, out? Yes, I have the application. And I actually have it filled out. I just haven't submitted okay. it for an actual We could, probably couldn't consider it today because we have to do other stuff. But I'm sorry, Brian. Uh, well, I, I mean, just to build on uh, Essentially, the approval from ABCC, and you don't open, then it's all done. Yeah. Take it. Yes. And Rosen, I don't think the, the, at least I've never had the Board of Health is, I don't believe that, I may be mistaken, that's needed, but I don't think they have to go in front of you to then go to the Board of oh, Health. Oh, no, okay. no, no, no. At least the other establishments, we just schedule with them, they do the walkthrough, no. and issue us, and then I can copy that and send it to Cindy. No, we don't need, we don't need that, because that's not what Right. But it was part of the, since you didn't have one before, yes. we took that as a sign yes. that, in fact, the place and wasn't open. We, wasn't we are not able to, as I had gone to the Board of Health after the last um, question that had come up several meetings ago, um, there's nothing for the Board of Health in the kitchen and bar areas yet over at the church until that I was called that they'd be able to look at. So I did get an application, but we won't actually schedule them for a walkthrough until everything is set for them to do it. The only walkthroughs right now have been with the different building inspectors, uh, between the plumbing and the electrical inspector and the assistant building inspector, et cetera. So as soon as we're ready there, I'll submit and have them right. do the walkthrough on that. But um, I would expect we would take this up at our August meeting, no later, no delays to consider an application for transfer. Yes, the so expectation on our end is everything will be submitted long prior to the August meeting. Um, for advertisements and everything that has to happen and the voters' notices, et cetera. Um, I had come, we, we did have that discussion uh, at the last meeting asking you when you'd be ready. You said something along the lines of don't box me in, I don't know. And to me that sounded like like the when it come uh, what you had said earlier, and you know, I, I didn't, I didn't feel comfortable giving you any extension right. for the church work. And actually, we would, um, since again you hadn't done the uh, four things, if you hadn't done the four, one of the four things, right. uh, I was prepared to uh, uh, recommend to my fellow commissioners that we cancel the license, and take it back, right. cancel. The, um, um, but since you are. Do we have any pieces of the application, Cindy? I have a sure. Nothing? No. no. We'll pull the application No, no, no. I know. I know. I'm just saying. Sure. Um, so you have, um, I think you have a sense from the three of us. Uh, yes, and again, uh, I would have, um, I would move to uh, cancel the license today. Um, in fact, good faith, you intend to transfer it. Discuss that now. Um, so, uh, this is this is very 
troubling. I, I don't believe in pocket licenses. I, I just feel that this has gone on way, way too long. And coupled with the fact that I think the enforcement authority of this commission, which has already been called into question because of the great length of time that's gone on, I'm, I'm not I'm not comfortable. I'm not really comfortable. I mean, the, the 2628 is suddenly, oh, it's all ready, but there's no application and there's no fee paid. And we had to bring a legal action and expend money to try to get back the license that we took away. This, I hear and I see the applicant here being a very reasonable man very reasonable, reasoned argument being made to me. And yet, I'm extremely suspicious that it will be August and there'll be something else. And frankly, I think we have every, I think we have every reason, every good reason to revoke this license too. It has been a long, long time. We've heard too much and I, I, I guess I'm, I'm tipping my hand here. I, I'm really, between the last meeting and, and, uh, and this one, I have been um, struck by the fact that it uh, um, seems a lot of people think that we let different people play by different rules. And I don't know that if I was outside, as opposed to sitting where I am right now, that I wouldn't think the same thing. So I'm leaning. I'm leaning in uh, today, right at this moment. And maybe I'll be changed and swayed by the arguments of my fellow commissioners. But I'm leaning and simply saying, enough. Let's just draw the line and end this, this sad story. Because it's gone on since, what, 2008? No one else that I'm aware of has been allowed to hang on to license for that length of time. And again, I, I think uh, uh, Chair Rosen may know of uh, a past precedent that I'm unaware of. And I, I ask to be educated by, by somebody who's been, uh, been on this commission for a long period of time. Uh, I don't know that there's a precedent. Uh, in my mind, it doesn't matter. Um, we have this case before us. And I agree that it's, you know, we have every right to say it's a pocket license. We already did with the one. And we, at that time, claimed he was ready to open in a matter of weeks. Yet we took it away. So we did We did show you know, our, our uh, uh, that we were willing to enforce the rules on this applicant as well as other people. So we took one away, even though he gave us assurances at the time, I'm ready to open. Well, that wasn't good enough, so we did cancel at the time. And actually, we're going to be talking about the issuance of that license later on in the agenda. So this case here before us, um, again, I was prepared to say, yeah, this is, this is definitely something that we should, uh, we should uh, Revoke uh, that at the last meeting where I threw out the possibility of an extension, I expected to hear something different from the applicant from the licensee, and I didn't. I really didn't. You know, there was it was more of the same. This is different. And again, we said that you really have to you really have to do something with this license, put it in operation, and get rid of it, or we get rid of it for you. And uh, if uh, for my part, if there's not a fully developed application, everything done on Cindy's desk in time for our August meetings, and everything can be done. At the August meeting, I would revoke this license like I was planning to do today. So I'm thinking along those lines. I was... Uh, I agree. Right. Your thoughts, please. I, I agree with you. I have to have everything ready by the August, then done. Um, yeah, and the, the, the impression is certainly out there that we haven't done our job. But again, we did take, we did cancel one license, and uh, we're, um, you know, clearly prepared to cancel the other. But we have, we have a new, um, a new piece of information. He always, he always had the right to transfer this license to another friends, or he always had the right to sell it to somebody else who wanted to offer it. Okay. For various reasons, over all those years, um, the um, uh, yeah, it, it continued. It didn't become you know there were 
there were things that he offered up. There were problems in the recession, business conditions, uh, the difficulty of the project. And for one reason or another, we did delay, and perhaps unreasonably so. But we find ourselves today with this set of facts. And I think that um, it would not be unreasonable to um, require the transfer of this license uh, by our artist team. That way we're not waiting around on some nebulous um, set of renovations to be completed at this old church. But we are saying it's going to be an operation. And that, that was the intent to not have to come back in front of you until it made sense to come back in front of you and the right. space is completed. Right. So but no again, you know, even if we even if we approve the transfer here to uh, in August to 2628 Center Street, we may not approve it to be transferred back to uh, the old Baptist Church. How long um, we will have the application um, say if we don't do something else here today. We would have the application at our August meeting, we would consider it. If we approved it, we'd send it on to the ADCC. They would get back to us in two to three weeks, I believe. Um, the, um, and then that would mean by our September meeting, you know, drinks should be served. Not necessarily because I'm not certain depending upon, it would depend upon when, I can't serve any drinks until we actually are granted the license by the city through the ABCC. Right, that's what I mean. Yeah. ABCC gets back to us in two or three weeks. Whenever, yes, in other words, we I We will hand you the license. I don't know the date of the It's all license, hypothetical at this point. Yes. We would hand you the license and we say, open. Yes. And um, we could even set some conditions for your opening at our August meeting if we decided, in fact, yes. to transfer, um, such as the number of days you'd be uh, required to be in service of alcohol, and the timeline after uh, receipt of the, of the license from the city to be open. I expect if you say, if you say it's ready to go, and you have a board of health permit. I can't see any reason why you could, there, there is with your resources, you're an experienced uh, uh, licensee, you couldn't have the place open that night, for instance. Well, we have to provide the license to the distributors to order the product. That's the only, that would be the one. It's typically a day or two days, depending on the product. Right, I, I'm, I'm, yes. So, in terms of your hypotheticals, yes, if the, if the turnaround is within several weeks of that meeting from the ABCC, we'd be prepared to open when we're granted the license. I want to take the other car in a day or two. The space is ready to go for this, so that's... But, in my mind, this license hands by, hands by a thread here. And, you know, we did cancel the one, and we have every right to cancel this one. And, um, we would, you know, I think, be responding to um, a, a, you know, this number of comments I've gotten to take it, you know, to take it away. But let me turn this back over to uh, <coughs> any further comments. I, I think I'm going to be the odd person out on this one. Um, if I had been told at the last meeting a month ago that I had three or four options, I would have made darn sure that the option I was going to do was going to be a transfer, that that application would have been in, that things would have been processed, that I would have been able to stand up there and say, it's, it's all in the hands, um, you know, I've, I've done it. I, I, again, there have been so many assurances made that haven't proved true, um, and there are a lot of people in this town who would benefit uh, business-wise from having uh, a license. So I, I I think too much time has gone on, and, and perhaps my perspective is, as I said, the author is now, but I, I, I don't want to wait until August, and, and then I'm here in September, next will be October. So I'm, I'm, I guess I'm making it pretty clear that I would vote today to, to end this long, drawn-out uh, process. Well, I feel uh, maybe I was um, I misunderstood. 
Commissioner Rosen, because the way I took it was you have four things to do with this license. When we see you again, you're going to tell us which one you do, and it kind of backs it up here in the minutes. But maybe that's just the way I'm reading it. So I fully expected him to come here with one, two, three, or four today and tell us which one he was going with. You know, actually the same thing occurred to me too, that, you know, you know, if you were, if you were, if you were doing this the right way, we would have an application to hand out. And you're right, I, I thought, I've been thinking about we, that. We first. tried to see if there was a way that the first thing that we did because of the extensive amount of work and effort and the transfers back and forth was to see if there was a way that we were going to be completed on or about the time frame that you felt comfortable. And, uh, you know, it just wasn't possible. And so the application, and this was the last thing that I wanted to do, as you mentioned, I've had the ability through all the years to be able to transfer this license. It's not, it hasn't been a situation where we've not been allowed to come in and transfer it. The goal is to see this place open. And the goal is to not waste the city's time or efforts or anyone's time in terms of hearing me every month discuss why we're delayed. So well, I, we would have, I'm sorry to cut you off, but we, we would have called a halt to that today. Right. And so I had thought that you were either expecting me today to come in front of you with a specific time frame in terms of meeting what was discussed at the last meeting or whether we were going to look to sell it or transfer it. So I would ask for the ability uh, to submit so that we can be in front of you with no BS and nothing beyond the August um, meeting uh, where you take it and and everything in terms of our I's dotted and T's crossed in terms of the submission will happen so that we can uh, properly transfer the license. I've done a number of transfers through the years we've been in good standing as a license holder for the 20 years I've had liquor licenses in the city would suspect and expect that with this transfer um, that all the paperwork will be done properly and that the state will look favorably upon the transfer so it can be done in a quick manner as fast as they're able to turn it. And if that were not to happen in terms of the submission by the August meeting, then I fully understand, but that's what I'm asking for. And there's not any further delays beyond um, that August meeting, and as soon as we're granted the license, um, we would be prepared to have the service of alcohol happen there. Um, we have uh, we have nothing here as far as action to take as an emotion. The only motion that makes sense here um, would be a motion to cancel. So we don't have an application. We can't we can't approve um, transfer. We don't have an application. All we can do today. Is um, a motion that I was originally intended to make to revoke the council's license. Um, so I think that still applies right now. So well, then I would I would move so move that we treat this as a pocket license that's been out there way too far, and if I would uh, move that it be canceled. I'll second that for purposes of discussion. Uh, Brian, you have a motion on the floor that you're prepared to talk to? It's of my opinion, you know, to, I told you, I was under the impression he was going to come and tell us what he was going to do with it, and then move forward. So, in my mind, you know, I don't know if you can use the words like fair or unfair, but to me it's unfair. Say you have one of four things to do, and he comes up and tells you one of the four things, Hey, no way, that's not good enough. See, that will be not believing that. So, it's my opinion that he has his 30 days, or 31, or whatever it is, by next month's meeting, if he doesn't have everything, you know, kind of T's crossed, uh, the whole bit, then he'll take it. And then he wants Thursday. He grants it. I, I'm, I'm afraid I, I've looked, and I know I'm in somebody coming new to the commission. I've looked long and hard, and I, I just, I, I just think it's, it's gone on way too long. Um, and the fact of the matter is, 
to tell somebody what they already know um, as far as their options and have known for many, many years uh, is not the same as promising that we're going to give yet more time. And I, again, I think I heard uh, drinks perhaps not being served until September, and suddenly, you know, my radar goes up, what are we going to be in October, November, and there's still going to be brown paper on the windows. And of course, I, I'm sounding cynical, but I am in this process because it's been a very long, drawn out process, and I guess I will stay uh, the course with my motion. So my comment to that is also I can see in the, during the construction progress, you know, or process that he's taking and trying to actually get with his contractors, like I believe you said earlier, uh, here tonight, to actually pin down that date and see when, you know what I mean? So it's not like he left here and ran right to the uh, city's office and grabbed an application, I guess is my point. He's trying to figure out, is it going to be possible to do that? Weigh my options, okay? I don't know how long it takes to fill out the application. The only thing, if I can add, I didn't want to stand in front of you and be dishonest. I could have come in front of you at the last meeting or this meeting and said, I hear what you're saying. We're going to open by the end of October and then take the time between now and September and say, we've run into difficulty, so I'm going to present this transfer to you. I didn't want to paint you in a different box. I'm being open and honest with you. It wasn't a month wasted. It was a month where the guys have worked as diligently as they can, and one piece has to connect to the next piece in terms of waiting for schedules. And so if I were dishonest, I would have stood in front of you and said, thank you. Um, after the last meeting, we've decided that we will be open by the October date that you had presented us. And I just didn't want to do that because it's just not possible. We're asking for 30 days. We'll hold to the letter of the law in terms of what has to be submitted by the date that it has to be submitted, and the service will happen um, sooner than it would happen if we were moving forward at the, at the uh, church if we were able to get finished. So I'm just asking for your understanding. And, and, I, and I just need to respond to that. I am in no way impugning your integrity. No, 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 no. no I'm, I'm not stating that. I'm just stating that I didn't want to come here under the uh, uh, assumption that, well, if I just tell them that it's going to be done in October, and then at the September meeting, come and say, well, we ran into difficulty, but here's my application completed. I had thought, based on the last meeting, that I needed to come here with either the, the schedule that we were going to uh, be open or the other options. And the application, we've done a number, I've done six of these in town, but all without issue. The application is very straightforward. There's pieces of the application that have to have certain sign-off by people other than myself um, or, uh, th that I have to have done in long before the newspaper deadlines in terms of submission date for uh, the next meeting I have it in front of Cindy. And I've not had any licenses been thrown back based on problems or issues in the past, and I'm assuming that this would go pretty straightforward as well. well you have had one. The one that previously was attached to 2628. Saying all of the licenses that I've submitted. Oh, the application. Applications. Yes. yes, sorry. Well, um, all right. So that's what I really I'm don't, I, you know, for myself, I really don't care about the church. Mm -hmm. You know, as far as I'm concerned, that process, that that, that thing will never get built. It just seems. Oh, sorry to you feel that way because it is going to get all built. All right, but, but, you know, it doesn't matter to me anymore. Right. This was a pocket license, it wasn't an operation. I was prepared to tip you away because you, uh, because we got no assurances you meet the June deadline uh, at our last meeting. I thought that this would be um, within our rights to take away, like just like we had taken away one at the meeting before. And um, so um, we will be talking about that license soon. I'm sure the loss of that license was, um, uh, you know, meant something to you. But you know, we're not. I'm not in the mood to um, to hear anything other than than um, you know, there's an application that is completely in order, and that you know from our experience we don't foresee the ABCC would deny. That's all. And if we don't see that at the August meeting, then this license goes away. So I intended the board to do with this meeting today. But uh, we have a motion and a second on the floor. So unless there's any further discussion. Um, uh, the motion is to uh, uh, revoke uh, uh, license 04 and all, 
Paul Alcohol Restaurant License at 290 Main Street. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed, no? No. no. The no's have it. Uh, okay. We'll see you in August. All right, yes, thank you. Okay, um, the next item is item number 10. Discussion of process criteria for, for potential reissuance of seasonal fall alcohol restaurant license number 043. Um, this is a seasonal license uh, under the terms of the special act uh, that the city was granted to convert the five seasonal all alcohol licenses it had. This was one of them. So anybody acquiring this license will have the right under the um, terms of the special legislation to convert it to an annual one uh, for the payment of an additional $10,000, one time $10,000 fee to the city. So um, we, had, um, we had gone through um, some possible uh, considerations we could um, we could think about this license very briefly, I think at our last meeting, but I wanted to have a fuller discussion of that. And just to kick it off, let me say that there's nothing that um, is required from us. It's in our discretion to issue this license in a way that we think benefits um, the people who customarily buy drinks. You know, we are, we are charged to, uh, to issue these licenses so that people have, have this um, have these things available to them, and that uh, we can take into consideration all sorts of things, including the, um, uh, the benefits of the city, the impact on neighborhoods, uh, the benefit to any uh, uh, cultural economic uh, uh, factors in the city. We have, uh, we have broad discretion to issue uh, this license as we wish. So that being said, um, let me just ask you, did you, um, see the uh, opinion or the, the citation of the case law that the city solicitor gave us about this? Uh, I, I did, did see it, review it, and I, I was a little puzzled. Uh, I, and and I, perhaps we should ask the clerk this. I, I thought the question that we had posed was whether or not we had authority to, we had talked about a, a, a modified lottery system. Um, and there wasn't anything in there that seemed to address that. I, I know we have broad discretion. All those cases, uh, most of which I'm pretty familiar with, uh, give us that, that broad discretion. I just wanted to make darn sure um, that we weren't running afoul of some reg or some law somewhere dealing with the, the whole idea of doing a modified lottery basically vetted everybody, and then if we had more than one person who met the criteria that we'd all agreed upon, that uh, rather than it being perceived as perhaps a point of favor, it's whatever, the names in the hat. Uh, and I don't think that was addressed. No, I didn't see it either, but I thought about it since mm -hmm. our discussion. Sure. And I think that's, a, that's why we get paid the big bucks here to make these decisions. We have a, um, you know, we do have the discretion to issue licenses uh, to one out of a number of competing applicants, and that's what's done in other cities. Um, I discussed with the, uh, the ABCC about a lottery. He hadn't heard of one ever. It doesn't mean there wasn't, wasn't I can't one. be an odd person out. I said sometimes my ideas can be, a, a, I mean, but, just because it's always been done the same way, I don't, I never take that as, gee whiz, that's a, a great argument. The question is what's, and I think this is what Brian has been speaking to, essential fairness. I mean, he's, he's very concerned that people be treated fair and that there be a perception that we treat people fairly. Sure. Um, and there's al already, because of past things, I think an awful lot of perception that the, the commission, depending on who you are, um, have the rules in certain ways. So, well, but we don't have, a, as I said, we don't have any anything well, before us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We did 
did cancel a license recently. So we do enforce yeah. our uh, enforce certain things against people no matter who they are. So we have, though, um, I think that we can still be fair and still end up having to pick one out of a number of equally qualified applicants. And by qualified, I mean they need all the legal qualifications that, you know, in our opinion, we can have an opinion on this, this is the best for the city. And um, I think if the process is out in the open, and we're taking the first step by discussing the criteria today here for this process, and at the end of that process, everybody gets a chance to fairly present their application, we make a decision out of those uh, qualified applications. I think that, I think that we can, um, we can make a decision that that clearly would not be popular with the unsuccessful applicants or their or their um, or their friends and supporters, but that is nevertheless fair and within the um, you know, within the boundaries of statute and regulation and case law. So I believe that if we have criteria in place, we can make that uh, decision fairly. Well, I, I, what's we're discussing right now, uh, I, I say that I think we should pick one without uh, without any form of lottery. Um, that we'll have a number of applicants come before us. We can set certain criteria. Let me just suggest a few here. That by you. Uh, first one is anybody who's had a license uh, uh, canceled or revoked is not eligible to apply for this license. Um, and that secondly, that we would take into consideration um, the overall benefits of the city of this, uh, of this of an of such an application. Um, would that include, I just want to clarify as, as you're going around, I don't want to interrupt, but I want to clarify, would that include also looking, with, I hope so, um, whether or not an applicant is current with all of uh, his or its responsibilities? In this oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. No, you actually, actually we don't, you know, we wouldn't issue one in the ordinary course of events. We, we have it. We, we have um, in the past, uh, when somebody didn't have to pay, hadn't paid the property taxes or something to suspend the license and then actually there was a there was a well-known case where we said you can't operate because you're not up to, up to date on your taxes. So that clearly would have to be one of the things. In order to be qualified for the ABCC, also you need to be up to date on your you know the DOR, like that certificate of good standing, which we discussed on the earlier items. This is that open question. Mm -hmm. The guidelines that you're stating right now starting with the first one we stated, are they your guidelines, or are they written, or you know what I mean? They're, they are my suggestions for us today. So you, you can also to, suggest other things, too. I mean, we have a legal right to say, okay, this is not allowed to apply, or, you know, yes. because if, if, if I came to you and I said, this is the package, as long as I did all of this, I qualify. And every legal you mean, standing one you know, You mean we... Do we have the right to uh, bar all all licensees who have had a revoked or canceled license from this or application? Yes, we do. Any other? And if we and if we don't, I I want to see it. If they haven't paid their taxes, if they haven't paid their license fees, all of all, those things. But it's not all in here. That's what I'm saying. This is all part of the, you know. Yes, but this is. Like we have, to have quite a few things there. So. Yeah. Oh no, you do. But again, um, you know, I think I started by saying qualified. When I say qualified, it would be people who at this checklist. But beyond the qualification, we're going to have a number of people who are going to be equally qualified sure. for us. So um, we should say, how will we sort it out when they're here? You know, who is, you know, who is the best applicant out of all these good applicants uh, to whom we would issue this license? Um, we haven't had this before, so we can, we can set the criteria now ourselves. And we have broad discretion as that, um, 
you know, that snippet of case law that Alan Seewald sent us said we do. We can just, we can, we can, we can be very subjective, which is my yes. concern, which is why I brought up um, what may be a novel idea about having a lottery amongst those people who meet the minimum qualifications. Because yeah. basically, and I, I would simply um, ask the chair whether it would be worthwhile to revisit this issue, since it, I, I thought it was going to be addressed as part of our question to City Solicitor Seymour. Uh, Cindy, did um, did that come up in that discussion with Alan about the, uh, the question of lottery? Do you have your notes in that discussion with Alan about 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 lottery? Um, no, I thought that it just came up as being that we didn't have to that you didn't have to do that. Mm -hmm. That's all I remember is that it didn't have to be that way, and that you had the discretion. So. Okay, but there wasn't anything, um, yeah, if we can, we can do legal, it. If there's yeah. not a legal impediment, I, I guess that's what Brian and I are both trying to figure out here. If there's not a legal impediment, and we've got six or seven people, good people, who are here who meet the minimum qualifications, I don't want to sit here and say, gee, you made us, you know, you came in here and you made a bang up presentation, and, and I like the way you sound, so I'm going to vote for you. I, I feel that's, uh, that's unfair. I mean, if we really are going to have, if we only have, you know, one person who's qualified or two people who are qualified, it makes it pretty easy. But absent that, this is a human process, it's subjective, and I don't know, as a small business person, uh, I mean, you talk about perception, and if we rule everything out, we come down to one final, we pick it. Everybody that you don't pick is going to have a certain something to say, but you pick it like a lottery, like I'm saying, you take it. As long as we have minimum qualifications, well, I, I would insist yeah. on that. It yeah, has absolutely. to be something good for the community, and I think that that's, that I may win a lot, a lot of people. I hate to, I hate to, uh, this, this is going to sound outlandish, okay? Say we had uh, a chain that wants to receive this license. And let's just say for the purposes of this discussion, that chain was Hooters. And Hooters, I'm sure, would be all the qualifications here. Okay? Now, I, I mean, I'm, I'm saying I, I think I, I'm signaling here that I would have a bias against that sort of thing is not perhaps being in the character of the rest of the uh, establishments in the city. Um, and, uh, you know, I haven't made a judgment on that. I haven't voted to bar them, absolutely. I'm just saying, say there was somebody in our pool of equally qualified applicants who would really, really thought, this is not going to, this is not going to turn out well for the city. This is going to be very unpopular if out of a lottery, you know, um, you know, something, something, you know, something that's, that's, that a lot of the city would decide was, was, was a bad thing. You know, so we have, op we have an op option to use our discretion here. And we can, and we can still give everybody a fair hearing. But in the end, a lot of decisions like this are made, you know, you do pick a winner. And if the process is transparent, um, then, you know, the, the losers may grumble, but there's no cause of action. Um, there's nothing that, um, you know, there's, there's, there's nothing that would reflect badly on the, you know, on the city in the sense that they, 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 they wired it for somebody. I think that if we have, treat all applicants the same, we can make a decision there. Um, if we have a lottery, you know, there's a lot of people who can get, who can, who can satisfy all the items on the checklist. Well, that's where, that's, we, that's where I think we, we disagree, Bill, because I, when I said that we wanted to hear from everyone fully and in great detail and we wanted to vet them, and then if, for example, you felt strongly that Hooters, and I, I'm not going to take 
not going with that one. Um, the, the fact you it's felt just very a strongly. Hypothetical. It's a hypothetical. I love hypotheticals. If in fact you felt very strongly that was not going to serve the best interests of uh, um, enhancing, shall we say, our entertainment district, our restaurant business, etc., then that would be part of the vetting process also. I think that we can, in fact, vote because we don't think it's going to be in the best interest of the community. That's one of the, the oh, when I say okay. minimum qualifications, I don't mean that just, we just, just say uh, you paid the fee and you have, don't have any felony convictions. That's not, I mean, we have to have, I think, a, set, a standard set that everyone understands. And one of those, which we always have to have, I think we're required under the statute, we have to take into account the best interest of the overall community. But once we get that vetting done, I bet there's going to be, um, I, I doubt there's going to be a Hooters, but I, I bet there's going to be a handful of people who are upstanding good business people who are all going to feel like they're in a horse race. And um, I, I just think, why do we have to have a whole lot of subjectivity at that point if we have, in fact, heard everyone in, in depth and in detail and have, have basically you know, knocked out those people we do not believe are going to serve the best interest of the business community and the overall Northampton um, public, um, or who have other statutory disqualifications. Well, then we are applying our subjective. We are picking winners and losers out of the initial pool. We so we are, we, are, we are being subjective. At an earlier stage, but we're still being subjective. We're still picking a loser. There. Discretion involves subjectivity. Okay, but we're leaving the final, the final um, uh, awarding of the license to to a, a lottery. So if we have exercised some sort of subjective judgment, don't we open our at a previous stage? Don't we open ourselves to the same sorts of things you fear that somehow? You know, we were um, uh, we were doing uh, you know we were we were excluding people we didn't like or the city didn't like for one reason or another don't seem to be um, worthy of, of our you know our high moral standards. But you could flip it around and look at it the other way. It's highly unlikely that you're going to have of the pool that will come before us that you're going to have a hierarchy where you can clearly show that this person is, is the, the golden winner up here. You're going to have some people who are experienced, um, good business people who are in the same category. So I'm, I'm just simply saying that I think that we could establish, but I wanted to have some legal basis for that. I understand how broad our discretion is. I understand that we can just simply um, listen to everybody and vote our conscience as we see fit. And that that is basically something that's very little that can be done to the disappointed applicant. I was just trying to try something different um, since we're going to have a number of people and I think a lot of them are going to be quite, quite well qualified. I'm going to be wrong. No, no, no. I, I think a number of them will. You're right. No. Um, but I, 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 again, I will, I will assert again the question that I raised the last time was whether or not there was anything at the ABCC or that anything that our city solicitor saw that would put Brian and my, you know, our, our desire to try this um, at, uh, at, at risk. I don't want to put the city at risk for unnecessary litigation, so. Let's get a definitive rule. I mean, I you, know how this, you know how this goes. Mm -hmm. you, you have all people. Know how this goes. So um, everybody does it a little different. Yeah, right. But the uh, if um, so, he we will just say to him, root around in the case law. Again, I talked to the ABC. I think he'll probably get the same. Um, They've never heard anyone who did information yeah. from them that I did. I don't know. Maybe maybe he'll talk to Kelly because I talked to Sacramento there. But, Kelly left. Huh? I think Kelly Kelly? Had left. Well, that's right, he's gone, right? Yeah, he's gone. Yeah. All right, so I couldn't talk to Kelly anyway. So I talked to Ralph mm -hmm. Sacramone. So, um, but he can talk to them again. He can, he can find, find out if it's permissible or not. So we could, you know, you guys 
both would like to pick it out of a hat. I'm, I'm thinking um, that doesn't appeal to me as much, but I'm not going to. Uh, I'm not going to stand on that position. Well, let, guys, me, let, me, want... let me check with, in with Brian because I, I I feel if we properly vet people, we will probably end up with a small group that will be hard to choose among because they all seem to be pretty good business people who deserve a chance at a license. And, and we can, I'm sorry, just to clarify what you're saying, if we can say, yeah, you're going to put a, you're going to put a place in, um, uh, in in uh, in the middle of Florence, which is going to be, um, or you know, in a, uh, a side street in Florence, which wouldn't fit the, the neighborhood, so we're going to exclude you, or something like that. Mm -hmm. So we could still do that. Community that. best interest, yes. Okay, so oh, no. we'll have we'll have a number of things that we can do there. Okay, I'm sorry, she was actually asking you. I'm good with that. I mean, there's only two options. We're either going to go all the way and scrutinize right down to the end, or we're going to do a partial and then a lottery. Right? Those are our two options. Yeah. I think that's what we're talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, the latter is fine with me. All right, I well, think it's fair if you get three, two, you know, two or more in the end. You know, it's going to be a hard choice anyway. So. All right. Um, we would need, though, the, the city solicitor to tell us it's cool. We need to establish a route. I, I Shout, agree, that's, that's, what, doubt, I was, that's so. what I was well, hoping I think, for this time, yeah. I would say if you're allowed to scrutinize at all, mm -hmm. then you certainly could have a lottery because the basis of a lottery is less scrutinizing than actually knocking people somebody out. Good. So logically that makes sense All right, do you want uh, to, I, I mean, okay, I, I'm not, if you guys would like that to be part of the process, mm -hmm. um, you know, I won't, I won't uh, stick by my guns here. But if, uh, but we'll need, uh, we'll need uh, Al to say that there's no harm. That you, would, you would, you would feel more comfortable. About I would feel much more comfortable. Okay. I right. certainly don't want to uh, stray outside what is our lawful authority. Okay. Why don't you talk to him? Um, I'm moving on vacation tomorrow, so. Oh, okay. I'm, I I'm sorry. I have to right. say right. either you or Brian will have All to right. talk. All right. One of us here too. You're ready to go, I see. I am. <laughs> um, He's dressed for the weather out there. <laughs> um, all right, then. Um, uh, I'll, I'll talk to him. I'll, we'll try to get that as soon as possible. So, one of the things uh, I would, however, like to go through this proposed timeline, too. So, part of our processing criteria would include a timeline for doing all this thing. And just in order to save time and put this long, long dormant license into operation, uh, I had Cindy come up with this timeline and sent it to you in advance of this meeting so that we could discuss it, so that we could get moving on this stuff. So, um, uh, and as you see, on July 2nd, that's today, a deadline will return at this meeting. So I would like to to have a deadline for applications to be in. Uh, I would like to, and then if, if we have any changes in this timeline, we can make that, but part of this is dictated by the uh, butters notices and all that, but it's... it's so it's we're talking the, a two month. Yeah, it's in the days. interest of, of moving this as rapidly as possible. Correct, Cindy, is there yes. anything that... Um, mm -hmm. The, um, so, I have down here uh, this proposed mm -hmm. deadline for any applicant, and once we do this, whatever we do today, uh, we would want to have this go out on the city website, and also perhaps um, what what else the, the, uh, a letter to all to all the people who already express interest. Right, right. I have a list of them. And um, we might also even. There's already something on the website saying that it would be discussed today and that there would be a deadline. Okay. Newspaper, are we also doing paper? It's up to us. I would like to see a newspaper uh, notice, legal okay. notice. All right, so with the same information that goes on the city mm -hmm. website mm -hmm. notice, we do the result of our discussion today. Okay. All right, so, um, so let's, let's 
look at this timeline and then we can go back to anything else we want to put in the initial criteria that all applicants should be aware of out of the gate so that they will know when they submit an application and have something that we've already barred that we can be thrown out and save them the time and trouble. Um, so um, here we have an application deadline. This is the critical date of August 2nd, two, week, two months from today. I mean September 2nd. I mean September 2nd. Yes, I meant September 2nd. So, um, uh, and Cindy will have the packets ready for them to do what they need to do tomorrow. So that should give an applicant plenty of time, two months, to do this. Uh, people who've already expressed interest have probably already been gathering, marshalling their forces and uh, deciding how they want to do this thing. So I think that's a reasonable amount of time to give people to submit their um, application. We have a meeting the next day. Could we consider one minor change on that? That's the day after, right, the day after Labor Day that you're asking people to get their, their applications. Could we do at the end of that week? It just seems as though a lot of people, uh, obviously. Yeah. Well, we have a meeting on um, the following Wednesday, OK? So again, if we push it off any further, then we back everything up in the letters notices and the meeting where we have to okay. do that. Well, that's, and that's, then, I, and don't, then I don't want to slow the process no, no, down. We, no, 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 I mean, if you want to, then just know that that would then, we wouldn't, um, we wouldn't be able to make a decision on, on uh, or, or draw a name on who would get this license until the November meeting. I, I, I think probably, uh, those folks who want this license would rather have it sooner rather than later. So I'll take back my suggestion we make at the end of that week. Okay. Do you have anything on this timeline? Okay. Anything so far, so far? So um, just for the purpose of the audience who are here, you can get a copy of this um, when we're done. But what we wanted to do was uh, uh, have packets available for applicants on July 3rd. That's tomorrow. We will set a deadline uh, for applications to be in November 2nd, I mean November 2nd, September 2nd, um, and the fee to the city and the fee to the ABCC would have to be submitted at that time. We would have a um, license commission meeting the following day, and we would have a number of applicants, and we would just assign them a presentation date. We've already blocked out a couple of times uh, for special meetings of the License Commission to have hearings on all applicants. And these would be hearings where we would invite any um, uh, the public to comment on any particular application or all of them. And um, that in order to have the public have um, the legal notice they required, we would have to, at the day following our September 3rd meeting on, November, on September 4th, we would send out a public notice, a Gazette legal ad with a list of applicants, and we would um, need to send all the abutters, and we would require all the applicants to give us a list of abutters. And if they know what they're doing, um, they, uh, we have two licensees here, they know how this goes, they would have to give us a list of abutters, we would have to send out notices, uh, little green postal cards uh, will come back to us saying that the abutters have received the notice. And then anybody, those abutters and anybody else who's interested in any particular application would have the right to come back at one of our two meetings. We would schedule these two special meetings on September 22nd and September 23rd at 4 p.m. And uh, we'll have the times and dates and uh, places for those meetings. But in the interest of moving this license to operation as soon as possible, we would schedule these two special meetings, hear from all the applicants at that time, and then on October 1st uh, would be our scheduled meeting date uh, for that month, a regular meeting. And uh, at that time, I propose that we um, uh, make our decision or draw our name. Well, let, me, let me suggest that it may be a two-part process. If you're talking about truly vetting people, we're going to be hearing from them on the 22nd and the 23rd. Is it your understanding that at the end of those 
hearings that we will actually, based on our criteria that we're talking about now, um, be vetting some people out. In other words, letting people know right then and there that they're not going to make it to the next level of the scrutiny or the process. Or are you are you saying October 1st we're going to announce uh, you know we we vetted out these and, and these are these are the five or four or three people we feel are eminently well qualified. Here's the hat. Well, let me ask you a question. No, mm -hmm. I, I drew this up like this. We have to do, of course, an open meeting. Mm -hmm. I figured we'd hear from all the applicants on those two days, but we'd not have any deliberation then. Uh, yeah, I, not spelled out here, but what I thought was we would have it. If we go with your idea of having, mm -hmm. of, of saying to some, you know, you know, we are, uh, we're not putting you in the last round, and we would do that at the October 1st meeting, and then we would have and then we would, we would uh, have the random uh, choice of the name also at that meeting. Okay. So in other words, we do the, so we won't we do our, down all our deliberations have to be in open meeting anyway, so that we would have, if you guys would be there. And if, and if the ABC and Alan give us the... Right. Yeah. Okay. So, and, and, if we, and if we are told that somehow we're precluded from having any, any sort of lottery at all, then what we would do is we would just have the deliberation um, October and say, you know, we go down all the applicants. We have a discussion about, you know, about them, um, and we might then uh, uh, decide, you know, who is uh, who's most qualified, and then from, from finals among our deliberations, we know that down. Or if we have a lot of, we decide among ourselves who are the finalists, and then and then make the um, the drawing. So either way. So does that seem... Seems like a fine timeline. You and Cindy did a nice job. Looking at the timeline of the question, um, I asked on here if we wanted to have a second date of October 2nd because the October 1st is actually the scheduled meeting and there's other things on the agenda. Oh. We need to move it to the next day. Also. So we would meet two days in a row in case Again, we... Again, I don't know. I didn't know if you wanted to move that one. You can book the room. Let us see how many how many applicants. If we have a you know an ungodly number of them, then yeah, that would be a good idea. Um, we have 12 already. What's that? We have 12, already. Twelve expressions 12. of interest. Yeah. Okay. I think we should book the room. Yes. Oh yeah. Yeah. Do it. All right. So we're turning from the timeline to broad criteria. Um, I think that, let, let, let me put it this way then. Um, let me say that in our notice, that, uh, and I don't, I don't know, do we need to put in the notice there's a possibility of, of a drawing among the most qualified applicants at the end or not? But let us, um, <coughs> Let us, put in, let, us, let us put in this notice to all applicants that we will be making a decision that we feel is in the broad interest of the city and then include perhaps that citation that Alan gave us before or link, give them a link to it. Or simply that we will be looking at our the broad interest of the city and the overall business community in addition such applicants must meet all statutory and regulatory requirements, right. which covers everything from being up to date on your taxes, to et cetera, et cetera. And I know that's in the ABCC's uh, regulations, but I think people need to know it up front so they don't waste $25. I mean, it's a non-refundable $25 fee to the city. Uh, and if you're somebody who's, who's not going to meet those requirements, you shouldn't waste your money. Okay. Um. I, I, I was going to cite at least a portion of that prose there about you know, what, mm -hmm. what's allowed to local licensing authorities. Just cite that Sounds good. briefly in the thing. Okay, so um, we will have to give Cindy um, the wording of this um, so that she can get it out uh, right away. Uh, so I think probably, we probably need to do that. 
here and now an open meeting as tedious as that as that is. Um, just to I'm make sure. I'm just waiting for that. Okay. Then, um, then the um, what did the what did the um, notice that already went out about the license say? The one on the website? Yes, what does it say? It just says that we're meeting today and that there will be a decision to turn in packets to be available tomorrow. All right. Set. Then um, again, it's maybe tedious, but let me let me let me give you let's give some of the exact language right now then to do this. Um, uh, the city of North Florida, um hereby notifies uh, all interested parties um, that seasonal all alcohol restaurant license number blah 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 Um, is available for issue um, uh, interested parties are invited to submit an application a complete application All required fees by September 2nd, 2014. <coughs> then um, <coughs> the um, <coughs> then the um, timeline for this process is as follows, and then we will just take this that we have down here on paper, okay? <coughs> but the timeline for this is as follows, for this process. And then at the end of that, um, say, um, the local licensing authority of the city of Northampton has broad discretion to choose among applicants for this license. And um, actually, we've called one other condition I'd like to add here. Um, I will cite, then I'll take a piece of Allen's thing and stick that in there. Okay. And the citation of case law. And then what we should say is that the um, uh, License Commission, therefore, will take into consideration these factors in deciding who to do the grant license. First one. Um, uh, uh, applicants must meet all must meet all legal qualifications as established by the city of Northampton. to 
operate operate a license in the city of Commonwealth. Um, does that say everything about the checklist? Uh, you would want to say, is there anything like that? I mean, they, they should know what this is. Yeah. Right. Okay. Right. I, I was going to say, unless you want to reference the overall statute, Then um, here's one new thing that I would like to say. I haven't discussed this yet, but one thing I was thinking is that I think it would be in the interest of the city not to have a seasonal license. We went to the time of trouble getting the legislature to pass a special act that they should be converted. I think we should require any successful applicant to convert this to a year round um, within a certain amount of time upon being granted a license, or even immediately. License in other words, to submit the application, we would have to grant the seasonal license in the October meeting. And then we would have a November meeting and we would say they would have to have an application converted to all annual by the provisions of the special act, pay the $10,000 fee. But we are only going to um, grant this license to people who agree to convert this on the annual license. So that, I did ask uh, the city solicitor about that. That is certainly within our discretion. I think we do that to require them to convert this to a season of the year. It's better to consider the interest of the overall community and the whole pledge. It also would be an economic burden for a person who has a full license. I can't, I mean, it would be inconceivable that something would apply. Well, of course, they, they, they would. I mean, they would. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
is seasonal prices to annual uh, under the provisions of chapter whatever it was of the acts of 2000. Provisions of this of chapter uh, of X of the, uh, the special acts of year. Um, and they would know then that, that requires a payment of a ten thousand dollar fee. Um, because that is um, that's not in the act just says the city may require a fee. So should we put the ten thousand dollars in here? Um, yeah, okay. The um, uh, the fee for conversion is a one time payment of ten thousand to the city of Northampton. Um, again, let me return to additional criteria. Um, I believe that no one who has had a license canceled or revoked should be able to apply for this license. That is also uh, within our discretion. Um, that uh, a question I asked the city solicitor to confirm if we could, we could set such a condition. And then any other conditions, I mean, any other things we want to notify the public about? I'm saving the last one for the general. Um, anything else we want to say about the general economic and cultural health of the city in the last? But before we get to that one, any other, any other things you would want out to know? Anything that you think you would take into consideration um, You know, when, when you're hearing all these people come before us who want this license. Anything you want to hear that you would want all applicants to uh, to meet? No, I think the I think the broad, I think basically a broad ending statement saying that we will select based on the overall best interest of the, the city and the public public best public best interest. Anything, anything before that broad interest statement that you would want to add? You know, you brought up the point that the things are to do that. Yeah, but we can't take like yeah. official, we can't take official notice of that. Yeah, true. Uh, if we grant a license to somebody, um, but, okay, do we want, okay, let me bring up so, uh, the one additional thing that I thought. Let us consider requiring them to put it in operation by date certain. I think that's a 
marvelous idea. Don't you think? Do, 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 I do. do I, I, I sort of like the sound of that too. Yes, and I would like to, you know, again, that there they have a place that they Otherwise have. Otherwise, consider it popular. Yes. Right. So we would grant. Okay, hypothetically, we would grant this license uh, in early October. When? Do you think is a reasonable date to require them to be to commence the service at all? Well, this is a touchy line because it, now you have to have a menu ready to go according to the No, 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 no. I'm not saying you know, I'm saying I'm saying no, they why would they sink all this money into renovating a place until they know how we get a license in October? So clearly we want to allow a reasonable amount of time. Right. So what is a reasonable amount of time? Assuming that we if you that's so hard to say because, you know, if you get that license and then you uh, have this grand idea of this building and you have to build it out, I mean, that could take. I, 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 I might, <laughs> I might, I'm good. I might. I'm going to throw out six months. Um, uh, there are going to be a lot of people who already have restaurants or have some kind of establishment. You're going to want that add line in six months anyway. <laughs> <laughs> or why hold it? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Um, <coughs> so, um, yes, I agree. Which, yes. So six months uh, not reasonable. I mean, right. Have six months from the from the date that date the, of the, the NLC issues the license. I mean, you can build a brand new structure in six months. Right. And just about how it open. You know, depending on what it is. I don't know about commercial, but. You know, Six months. Six months. Okay, so I'll go six to eight. <laughs> no, 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 no. We want to be more definitive here. Yeah. All right. Um, the successful. Okay. It, no, let's say this: the applicant who is granted the license. They'll have six months. Wait, let's just interject one thing. Do you want to say six months from the date ABCC approves? Mm -hmm. yeah, well, that's when the license is issued. Yeah. 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 Okay. But I mean, just want, so there, want to specify so people would know that. Oh. Yeah. All right. I'll uh, put something in there. From that's right. They might confuse it with the, our vote on the October exactly. meeting. Right. Okay. I'd like to see something in there beyond that six months that says um, the exceptions of things that out of your are beyond your control. If there was a fire or something like that, you know, you know what? Or something. Yeah. You know, just totally beyond your. Then control. they can come and reasonable people. Okay. Yeah. We. Demonstrated we're pretty recent. We're beyond reason, actually, sometimes. But yes, yes. Yeah, no, 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 yeah. I mean, you know, a meteorite hits their place. <laughs> <laughs> That's definitely well, what happened in Russia. You know that. All right, so. YouTube, okay. whatever. Um, who is granted? Okay, the grand shall have six months from the date the license is approved by the ABCC. to um, put it in operation. And that put in operation has a meaning within the context of, of, of the statute and the regulations and the case law. So put in operation means they're serving alcohol. Okay, is that worded okay? That, that, that's fine. I don't know why I come back and say something that wasn't clear here. No, I, 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 th I think we're writing in English, not legalese, and that's good. Uh, so, you know, I don't know if you can do this. Well, that's fine with me. Right. Um, Clear the better. I think that we ought to just now put in the broad, okay. uh, in, the, in the okay. community's best economic right. and cultural interest. Right. Um, um, the NLC will use its permitted discretion. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. To consider the broad interests of the city, you want to spell that, economic, cultural, whatever, of the city and its and its residents? Yeah, I think that, I don't think we need to spell it out because I, I think okay. there are so many permutations mm -hmm. of 
be writing for a long time. Okay. Okay, so the North Ant Lice Commission will use its permit discretion to consider the broad interests of the city and its residents in deciding um, uh, determine the deciding issuance of this license. All right, so um, that is an open meeting, our criteria that we've established. And uh, our timeline is also there. It will be published tomorrow. In the timeline at the end, am I saying something about the, there being a lottery? Or no. No, not going to be said? No. No. We're still, we're going to. However, we did this in open meeting. The fact that this has been discussed here, I'm sure, and anybody who calls you, you know, who has any particular questions, you could tell them that. But, Anybody who's really interested in this license uh, is going to uh, know of this possibility, I, I, I trust. You know, or you will let them know or you know, we'll tell them. But they still have to get an application in. They still have to meet our criteria here. And you know, then at the end, if they, you know, if they, if they fall by the wayside, you know, you know, they could have done it anyway. I mean, in a sense, um, you know, our discretion would be also a matter of chance for them, as well as the lottery. So we haven't changed the essential, you know, risky nature of their going through the application and doing all this, hiring lawyers, whatever they do, right? I mean, you know, they're taking a chance either on our, on our discretionary judgment for the final decision or on the random chance of a drawing. So. All right, so those are our criteria. Thank you for putting up with this tedious thing here, but I thought it was important to do this out fully in open discussion. So uh, any further comments on this? Okay. All right. Um, next item, approval minutes of June 4th, 2014. Any changes or I'll take a motion? I'll move the step as written. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any new business? I have none. Cindy, do you have any? Okay. Uh, I'll move we adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.